Okay, question number 20 says, what is the conversion factor between kilometers per hour and meters per second? So I have one kilometer per one hour. I need to do some conversions. Uh, I gotta end up with meters per second, okay? So what do you guys wanna uh, change first, the kilometers or the hours? Kilometers. Um, what's the ratio of kilometers per meter? Or whatever it is. What is it? Meters. Yeah, one kilometer equals a thousand meters. Now I want to cancel kilometers. So kilometers has to go down here. One kilometer, one thousand meters. Okay? See how that works? What's the relationship between an hour and second? Yeah, so one hour is equal to sixty seconds. Now that could be written two ways. It could be one hour minutes. minutes. Oh yeah, we gotta do it the second. So it's actually 3,600, all right, because it's 60 times 60. Don't memorize this. This is in your book, too. 3,600. So you can write that two ways. This times 3,600 seconds or 3,600 seconds over one hour, okay? Hours on bottom, so I need to put my hour on top here so it'll cancel. Now, what you want to do is I've written this a specific way. Oh, I still put minutes there for some reason. 3,600 seconds. I've written this a specific way so that I could cancel out some of my units, okay? So if we, this cancels, whoops. Sorry, my calculator is loading up at the same time. This counts, cancels with this, this cancels with this, and I'm left with meters per second. Now I just need to multiply the numbers. I got one times a thousand times one, which is equal to 1,000, 1,000 meters per 3,600 3, seconds, okay? And so you can just plug that in the calculator and um, 1,000 divided by 3,600, and you get 0.277 repeating, right? So what answer is that? A. Okay. Any questions on that one? All right. Let me clear all that out. Let's move on to the next one. What is the convergence between hours squared? So it's the same thing, but now we square the hours and we square the seconds. Now this is a, this is a little different. So if I say one hour is equal to 3,600 seconds. And I square this side and I square that side. I say that one hour squared is equal to 3,600 squared seconds squared, right? So now that one's a little trickier. So now I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna say 3,600 squared. Well, that's a big number, all right? Um, what was that, 12,960,000? So one hour squared is equal to 12,960,000 seconds squared. Does that make sense, what I did there? So now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna set this up. I'm gonna have one kilometer per hour squared and then I'm going to multiply that by 1,000 meters over one kilometer times um, one hour squared all over 12,960,000 seconds squared. Again, this cancels, this cancels, uh, this cancels, this cancels. I'm left with meters per second squared. Now I just got to do the math. So I'm going to say 1,000 divided by um, 12,960, 1, 2, 3. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, now I hit enter. And I get uh, this 7 point something, 10 to the fifth. So E. <clears throat> That's correct. Are there any questions on that? All right. Good.
Can we move on? Yeah, okay. Okay, so now for this one, it's uh, same thing, but now we have centimeters to meters squared. So remember that um, how do, one meter contains how many centimeters? A hundred. So now if I square both sides, what should be the relationship? One meter squared should equal 100 squared centimeters squared. Right? That's if I take this and square it, and I take this and square it. Well, what's 100 squared? Well, just in case, it should be 10,000, right? Boom. Now, how did Mr. Adams know right off the top of his head? Well, I got two zeros here, and then you add another two zeros, and you get four zeros total. All right? So it's one meter squared is equal to 10,000 centimeters squared. Okay? You guys see that there? Yeah. Which one? Uh-oh, spaghettios. You made a mistake. No, we didn't make a mistake. They wrote it backwards. Our answer is backwards. So what's another way that you could write it? Remember, Mr. Adams said you could write it like this. One meter squared over 10,000 centimeters squared or 10,000 centimeters squared over one meter squared. So which one is it? Well, it's they, our answer is this one. Right? One divided by ten thousand. How many how many zeros is that? How do you write one ten thousand in decimal? Zero. C, right? Yeah. Now if you if you're panicking and you're taking a test and you absolutely just want to double check to make sure that that's the right answer, uh, you could always just go in your calculator and say one divided by ten thousand. And then it'll give you the one times ten to the negative four. Okay. Any questions on that one? Okay, good stuff. Clear the ink. All right. So this one says four students measure the mass of an object, each using a different scale. They record the following, and it says which student is the least precise. C is. Does everybody know why? Because it's now they may be measuring in um, one unit, right, in grams, right. But we don't know because of that five zero because of the significant figures. We may assume that they're counting by ten. So that's that one. Well, that was an easy one. All right. When multiplying several quantities, the no, okay, this one's just straight up memorization. Uh, these are the rules for significant figures. The number of significant digits in the result must always be what? Equal to the least accurate. E. E, right? Equal to the number of significant figures in the least accurate quantities. And so if we were to go back to that other example, if I only measured um, up to 11, that's why you have this rule like if I have 11 inches times 12.5, this is two sig figs, this is three. When I multiply that out, I need to round to two because this is the most um, significant, or the least significant, right? Now, if I write it like this, if you do a homework problem and it says 11.0 times 12.5, then that's letting the reader know that they measured it to three sig figs. So then the answer could be three. Does that make sense? Okay, good. In physics, generally what we do, though, is we just keep as many decimals as we could possibly measure, do all of our calculations, and then at the end we round to a level of precision that we're comfortable with. Okay? Um, this was one, this is a funny one, a lot of people thought that this was wrong. Six pounds on Earth has what weight on the moon? One pound. One pound. One pound. Now, this isn't the one that people got wrong. It's the next one. Six kilograms on Earth has what mass on the moon? Six kilograms. Six. Mass and weight are different. Weight is due to gravity. The gravitational pull of the moon is one-sixth that of Earth because the mass of the moon is one-sixth that of Earth. So the mass never changes because that's the amount of substance. You'll weigh less, but you'll still have six kilograms. So that one's not wrong. Does that make sense? 
Okay, I got a couple emails on that one. Um, 10 milliliters is equal to one of these. Um, if you notice, we have megaliters, we have kiloliters, we have this. So I would check off the ones that we know that it's not. This is technically 10 to the negative 6. What's the uh, prefix for that? Micro, right? So that's not it. Um, 0.10 liters. This is 10 to the negative 3 times 10. So it's like 10 times 10 to the negative 3. So what would that be? Well, 10, if you add those up, it'd be 10 to the negative 2 liters. Do we have that? Yeah, it's easy. But we could, we could check these off the list too. The capital M is mega. Mega is 10 to the 6. And even if we move it 3 back, it's 10 to the 3. This is 10 to the negative 3, so that's not it. This is 10 to the negative 1. That's not it. Um, 1,000 liters, that's not it. It's way too big. So even through process of elimination, we would have ended up with these. Any questions on that? OK, good. You guys are doing great. Clear. Um, now, this is an interesting one. This is dim dimensional analysis. This one I could see being challenging. If I say r is equal to a times t, and then they tell us that r is m cubed, or meters cubed over s, and then they tell us that t is in seconds, seconds over 1, they want us to, to figure out what goes here. Well, how do I get meters cubed? I'd have to have meters cubed in the top, right? Mm -hmm. Now this s will cancel with the s down here, so down here I need s squared. Does that make sense? Yeah. Does anybody have any questions on that? So this is just dimensional analysis. What happens is this cancels with this, and then I'm left with meters cubed over that. So my answer is e. I could see somebody having a problem with that one. OK? Next. Wait, well, they, they, they give us, they say that this should be the final dimensional units, right? And then they tell us that t is in seconds, which means seconds over 1 is the same as seconds, right? And then we have to kind of guess what the dimensions of A are, so that way when you multiply it by S, you end up with meters cubed over seconds. So what happens is, is it, since you have a, a seconds up here and it will cancel with one down here, you really need two down here. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then because we have meters cubed in the top, we just have to have meters cubed in the top. Yeah. Okay? So there's this, this one. And then problem number 30. The distance D through which the beam of length L is deflected when it is subjected to a load may be described in the relationship D equals R L squared. What are the dimensions of the constant R? So D is a distance, so that's going to be meters. Okay. We don't know what R is. We'll do this little deal. And now what is length? Well, length is a distance, so that would be, and since the length is squared, that would be meters squared. So I have to plug something in the parentheses that will take meters squared and turn it into meters. What is that? Well, not exactly. We could do it this way too. We could we could solve by doing this. If I were to plug the R in, how would you solve for R? I would divide both sides by meters squared, right? These cancel, and guess what I'm left with? One over m. Right? Because this one cancels, and you leave a 1 in its place, and it cancels with 1 down here. Is that right? Okay. So then that could be written as m to the negative 1. Right? Does that make sense? Any questions? 